originally. We're a an Illinois family. Uh, Justice John Paul Stevens has always been his own man. When he joined the court 35 years ago, he was considered a moderate conservative. He became a reliable liberal. <laughs> Serving under seven presidents, he forged his own path. And when President Ford was faced with the Supreme Court vacancy shortly after the nation was still recovering from the Watergate scandal. He wanted a nominee who was brilliant, non-ideological, pragmatic, and committed, above all, to justice, integrity, and the rule of law. He found that nominee in John Paul Stevens. On the current closely divided Supreme Court, with five conservatives and four liberals, Stevens anchors the left wing. His impact on the law is broad. He provided a critical fifth vote to affirm abortion rights, uphold affirmative action, ban the death penalty for juveniles, and limit presidential war powers. Three years ago, when I was at ABC News, Justice Stevens granted me his only network interview. He insisted he was the same conservative Republican Gerald Ford nominated. I don't really think I've changed. I think there have been a lot of changes in the, in the, in the court. Born into wealth and privilege in Chicago, Stevens is a lifelong Cubs fan. He is known for his trademark bow ties and polite Midwestern manner. This is a country in which people can disagree without being disagreeable. I try not to be disagreeable in, in, in my, my opinion writing. I think for the most part I succeed. He is also fiercely independent. When the justices put on their robes before taking the bench, tradition calls for an aide to assist them, as in this old photo of Chief Justice Earl Warren, but not Stevens. He is the only one who refuses help. He does it himself. But the courtly justice also can be harsh. He wrote a scathing dissent in Bush versus Gore, criticizing the court's decision that stopped the Florida recount. Saying the decision would damage the court, he wrote, although we may never know with complete certainty the identity of the winner of this year's presidential election, the identity of the loser is perfectly clear. It is the nation's confidence in the judge as the impartial guardian of the rule of law. Stevens notified the White House in a letter this morning. Sources say the leading contenders to replace him are Elena Kagan, former dean of Harvard Law School and the current solicitor general, Diane Wood, a Chicago federal appeals court judge, and Merrick Garland, a federal appeals court judge in Washington, D.C., who is considered more moderate on criminal issues. The president hopes his choice to be a lasting legacy, just like John Paul Stevens. But one thing his choice won't have that Justin Stevens had is a quick confirmation. Justice Stevens was confirmed a mere 19 days after he was nominated, and the vote was 98 to nothing. Katie? And Jan, the president's choice, if he or she is confirmed, is unlikely to change the makeup of the court, as you mentioned. Having said that, is there a front runner right now? Well, Katie, if the White House doesn't want a fight, and my sources say they really don't, Merrick Garland would probably be the easiest to confirm. He's considered a moderate on some issues, but there are a lot of voices for a woman. Remember, only two of those nine justices are women, and that would point to Solicitor General Elena Kagan. Katie? Right. Jan Crawford at the Supreme Court tonight. Jan, thanks so much.